Right guys, back once again. Another Akai repair video. So this is the old stubborn um, <laughs> S1100. So thanks for all the comments, guys. I mean, a lot of you have been commenting on this particular area here, this chip, right? Now I've sort of cleaned it. Uh, there's this area here where some of the crew has been saying, especially my man like Paul has been saying that, there's a little bit of a mark around by this chip. But I'll tell you what this mark is, guys. This mark is where I was going through and I was getting a few shorts on one of these chips here. And uh, to be fair, I just marked it with a marker pen just so that I could uh, come back to it at a later date. So if it looks like the board's corroded there or one of the tracks are gone, it's simply because I've marked it and it's masking it out. So... Guys, you guys are recommending that we have a good clean. So I've got some soapy water. No, I'm just kidding. It's isopropyl. <laughs> and a toothbrush, yeah? I'm going to go around. I'm going to give all that area a little clean so you can see that it's nice and clean. Yeah? So as you can see, it's a bit dull. I don't know what's going on. Look, maybe it needs a bit more light here somewhere. Let's try getting it. Poor blimey. It's not very good... Uh, view today but it does look like this board's a bit sticky I know what you mean the old, the old gooey akai man let's see what that's a bit better I bought a ram tester uh, which probably won't come for a few weeks and I bought some dip sockets so that we can start taking out these chips testing them one by one um these things here there's another there's another section over here right guys let's move it kind of slow look I need to get i need to set this microscope up and just take this board out but look there's a section here right and i believe these chips here are ram as well right so i don't know if it's them we got an old TDK chip down here. Can we see that? There you go. Ooh. Keep that still. We got some more gear here. Don't want to take the labels off of me, uh, the chips. Oh, by the way, I was able to write back one of those LSB programs that I read uh, using my Epron programmer. So I'm tempted to just see if I can whip this out and put the other one in that I programmed from my uh, from my chip reader to see if it works. Because that would be super cool, man, if I can flip in right upgrade chips. But you got to test them, obviously, and know the settings. If you guys got any Epron programming tips, man, uh, and you've had a dabble with that, shout to um, big up the man like Stevie Boy and big up the man like Paul as well for giving me all these little tips on how to get this thing up and running. Right, so we've cleaned up. We cleaned up the board. Bloody sorry, guys. This thing's shaking like an earthquake. And it's not the best of thing. I'm going to set up an LED light on this uh, stand once I get a little bit of wires to wire it all up nice. I've got a lovely 12 volt LED system here and it's, it's wicked. So there you go. So let's do a little bit more testing. Now, I think at this stage, I'm probably going to end up having to flip in, download all of the chips. Yeah. I want to show you guys one thing as well, right? I'll tell you what I did the other day. This is this was quite interesting. Now, I've ordered one of these online because I thought logically here, right? Now, looking down here, right? Look at this chip here. Let me zoom in on it a bit better. Oi. Right, there we are. Let's see what we got here. Sorry, sorry about the shaking, guys. This is a bit springy to set up. Right, 
So this chip here, I don't know if you can see it clearly. Maybe I should try and see. There you go. That's the bugger, right? You see that chip there? That chip is a L6021A. Now, what I notice about this chip, I don't know 100% what this is for. I believe I've looked up the data sheet. I can't remember now what it, what it said, right? But there's a couple of chips in here that are actually in dips. And I'm wondering why they're in dips and the others aren't, right? They're dip sockets. So I'm thinking to myself, the reason why they put these in dip sockets is because they were anticipating them going and needing changing, maybe. You've got this one here, right, as one. And you've also got, let's find it. Yeah, there you go. These two here as well. I don't know if you can see the names of those there. AMI. AMI something or the other. But look, have a look at those Philippines. Those two chips as well. Let's look those chips up and let's see what they are. Right. And maybe those ones need changing. But obviously they've got to find a date sheet. We've got to test them first. Can't just rip them out willy-nilly uh my next thought if it's not one of these chips here that have gone if it's not one of these chips here that have gone it's got to be maybe one of these transistors maybe one of these transistors on the board and then you've got that crystal there as well that crystal's what is it 20 megahertz or something do I need to um, get an oscilloscope and test it? See if bounce off of one of these resistors here and see what I'm getting. Um, I've been looking at a few oscilloscopes online recently. I just want to get a feel for it because I've never gone that deep on the whole hobby electronics before. Um, yeah, we've also got to test out the digital board as well. Uh, I believe this digital board here is a digital out, right? On the on the Akai. This is the digital out board here. So there's an XLR digital socket here. And I'm going to feed that out. I've got to find what lead I need to use to get this digital out into a digital in on my sound card or my setup somehow. Spidiff or whatever the case is and we so was apparently to do that we need that will help to eliminate that it's not the output board what the case is so there's quite a bit to do here um this project's taking forever it's you know excuse my french it's a bit of a bastard this and then we got we've got transistor down here as well or, or mosfet or transistor whatever it is so many potential things it could be so many potential things i've changed pretty much every cap in this in this uh sampler and for those of you who are wondering about the board this board here right we got the output board here this whole output section right i've changed the whole output put section Oh, this is all not a brand new board, but it's from another machine. Changed it, made absolutely no difference. It's got all the old caps in here as well. It couldn't. There's. No, it couldn't just be a coincidence, right? That the two boards were duff. No way. Do you know what I mean? Couldn't be. Now all these boards, they're all connected into this section here. That was another reason why it led me to wonder about this dip because all these, if you look here, all of these cables, they come out from the output board, not come out, or they go to from out of this board here and into the output board. So maybe this is where it all, this is all part of the signal path for this lot here. And you've got that removable flipping IC. Is the removable IC40. Now this is what I'm going to tell you. 
Yesterday, I didn't even finish what I was saying. Yesterday, I took this IC at, this L whatever the, L6, 021A. I took that out, guys, and guess what? I thought, let me switch it on. I took the chance. I thought, let me switch it on. Pulled it out to see what would happen without this chip because you could take it out. And guess what? There was absolutely no change in the sampler. There was nothing missing as far as I could see. The sound was still sounding duff. So could it be this chip? I've I found the chip online. I've ordered it um, on eBay. It's coming from China. So it's going to take a while to get here. I've got a feeling that, you know, logic tells me that if you take this chip out and the problem's still the same, then that chip can't be doing anything, which means technically it's duff, right? I don't have a chip tester to test it. Actually, coming, coming to think of it, I might take it out and put it into that flipping Epron reader and see what I get. So that's the that's the update where we are so far, guys. I just want to say a big shout out to everybody for commenting on the last video, encouraging me to carry on with this crazy project. Shout to Ali Alex, shout to the Jester Music, shout to DJ Method, shout to Stevie Boy, shout to my man Paul, big up uh, Cut and Run 22. And all the people that have been commenting on this series. I know this series is not my usual hits, but this is me. This is what I'm about. And as well as making music, I love flipping dabbling in these samplers and I love dabbling in electronics. Always have been pulling stuff apart from a kid, getting in trouble for opening things up to see how they work. And sometimes can't put them back together again. So guys, if you've got any ideas from the tour that I showed you and as well, one last thing as well. I know we want to overall the, the power supply, guys, right? I know we discussed that, right? We want to overrule the whole power supply. But this is not the original power supply that was in there. I took this power supply out of an Akai S3000, right? Um, because the boards pretty much look identical, right? I took this out of an Akai S3000 just to overrule. And so far, it's the problem's still there. Even though the power's a bit more clean because this is a 3000, a 3000 is a newer model. The power supply still works in here. So I'm hesitant at this point to install uh, the uh, RD85A. Even though I've got all the all the stuff there to do it. I've got the the ground resistor, um, you know, pull. I've got the ground resistor there. I'm a little bit hesitant at the moment because I've got a working power supply as far as I know. And we could do some readings if you want. Let me know what you want to see in the next video, guys. What I should do. Uh, any readings you want to see me do with the multimeter so that we can uh, we can we can get this get this going also while we're here you know comment down below you know keep the community up to date guys on this this is a weird thing I found on this on this memory these are the memory boards now I know what I've discovered on these memory boards you've got some dip switches let me take it out here look I'll take out this DSP board by the way I've replaced the flipping I oh, know it's not on this board I actually replaced a cap on one of the memory boards to so try that as well, and it didn't didn't do nothing, right? Um, yeah, there's some dip switches here, and they're set to, uh, from what I can see. Let me get the glasses on real quick. The dip switches on this are set to. Yeah, let's go here. Have a look at it. Why don't you? It's uh, the one and two is off, and three and four is on. And apparently that's the standard, um, that's the standard settings, guys, for the dip switches. If you've just got two megabyte RAM uh, memory cards, right? They're the standard one. So, because I've got standard two, two meg, I've got three two megabyte memory cards on this. So I believe I've got six megabyte of Akai, uh, Akai RAM, yeah? which are these three here. Now, what's interesting about these, and I want to know if anyone knows about this sort of thing, right? If anyone knows about this sort of thing, um, these are connected with a capacitor to ground. Does Do they all need to be connected with capacitor to ground? 
I mean, this thought was happening even when I just had one memory blocking. So I don't think it's that. But I'd like to have a discussion about why would they why would they put capacitors on the memory? Strange. I don't know if you can see that properly. There you go. Have a look there. Let's get you in the frame. Yeah. Why would they put these capacitors and they go to earth on the board? Interesting. Right, there was one more thing I just had a look at here now. And I want to see these chips here, what they are. These are, hey, look what we got here. You got the same L6 chip, I think, here on this board. Let me have a look at that. I think this is an L6. Look at that. L6 021C. Is that right? Let me just double check it with my old glasses on. L6021 C and what do we have down here in the bottom? Ah oh, bollocks. No, it's not. That is an L6. That one down in the bottom there. Him. Him, him, him. Is an L6. Oh, okay, so it's not a B, it's an A. Let me see if there's any B's on here. Any A's on this one. No, they're B's and they're C's. Ah, sod's law. See, that would have been a nice swap. Because I, if I could find one of them spare boards, which I believe I've got a DS, spare DSP board somewhere. If anyone wants one, shout out your boy. Um, I could have used that. I could have taken the chip out of that. So that's a flop. That, that was a good idea while it lasted. But it didn't. So, guys, there you have it. That is where we are right now. Um, also, one thing I wanted to say as well, guys. Do you guys know of any old equipment that may have parts in it that we could use for Akai's? Chips, capacitors, um, picking your brains as well. There's some really tiny capacitors. What are the replacements for these capacitors? And is it worth me starting to take them all out and testing them? Do they go? Are they the type of capacitors that leak? Probably not. Anyway, peeps, that is another video, another, you know, Akai repair video. I know we ain't really repaired much tonight, but I just wanted to share my thoughts out there with you. Put the feelers out and you never know, guys, what you guys might come back with because I know there's some peeps in the community. So, guys... Take care. God bless. See you in the next video. Don't forget to smash the like button if you got anything out of that. Peace out.